save the open prayer. All right. Mm. Or about now our our earth and let's say, uh, say open prayer. Father, please walk us through the bad times as well as the good. May we be heard and understood. May you judge us by our hearts and not by our mistakes. And see to it that we get a breakthrough, you no, know, however long that it may take. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for the open prayer. So I welcome you all to our talk, Africa Dialogue. So this is the one African freedom dialogue the one african freedom dialogue this program has been going on often and we always have different things we talk about day in and day out and today on our section we are looking at socialism versus capitalism so briefly i'll give a background view of what socialism and capitalism is about then i'll call in my panelists to lead us into our convo for today, the dialogue we have today. So socialism, as we know, as its ideology from the communist perspective, where it says that our things we are own or things we have to own, or politically speaking, must be must belong to the government. That means we cannot own property as an individual, but our properties that we have to own must be publicly so that if one person has something, it should be for all and not for the individual. Their conception is that um, if an individual should owe a property, he will end up with trying to um, take, um, so Plato said that one person will have every good for himself, everything that he's supposed to get will just be for him and be accumulating wealth in a very bad manner. Whereas capitalism is saying that, hey, let's let's allow individuals to own properties and let individuals actually have businesses and this um conception this ideology uh, originated from um um uk the england so in the 18th to 16th 18th century where they said look we are going to own properties uh, individuals are supposed to own properties like clothing industry and all that just to boost the economy so basically that is all about socialism and capitalism i don't want to move into deep because i'll get my panelists to go through with us what socialism is what capitalism is it's important why is it needed is there any disadvantage with it? So basically, I'll just stop here so that I will not be the one doing all the talking and I'll give room for my panelists to come in. And if this is your first time coming in here, you are very welcome. And I believe the session is going to be a great session and you are going to love it and you are going to be blessed as well because our African anatomy, where we are, our world right now needs to know the truth. And this is the core reason why we organize this dialogue, just so that you understand basic ideologies we have put in place for you. So if, so when I say um, the one African freedom dialogue, it's a talk we always have regularly. So when I say Africa Voice International, you respond, you unmute and respond, Africa, freedom in Africa. So. Africa Voice International, then you respond freedom in Africa. So I welcome you all freedom giants to this great session. So please kindly unmute so that we can, I can get the vibe that everybody is with me. So when I say Africa Voice International, then you say freedom in Africa. So Africa Voice International. Freedom in Africa. Freedom oh, in Africa. It's just, it's just, is it all just one person in Africa. I have here? Great. Let me let's 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 all say it in one accord. So African Voice International, freedom, freedom in Africa. In Africa. Africa. Beautiful. Freedom in Africa. Beautiful. Beautiful. So quickly, I'll call on my panelists. Um, do we have freedom giant Frank here? Okay. So freedom giant um Eric. Okotu Okodi from Uganda, please, if you are in, can you just um, let us see your face and then just wave us. Freedom Giant 
Eric Okoto Okidi. Hi. Thank you for showing up. And then our next Freedom Giant, we have Freedom Giant Afkalu Abraham. Honorable, so Freedom Giant Honorable Dr. Akali Ibrahim, please, are you here? Hello there, hello, hi. Hi, thank you for showing that. So let me just quickly introduce myself as I introduce my panelists. So today I'm the one hosting the program for today on socialism versus capitalism. And my name is Freedom Giant Gloria Nakokwekwe, and let us begin. So our first session is going to take from, we are going to start with Dr. Honorable Dr. Ibrahim, Freedom Giant Honorable Dr. Ibrahim from Ethiopia. So can you give us your, your perspective? So we move from there and then. Um, Honorable, so Freedom Giant Eric Akutu Okudi will also give us, give perspective on this. Thank you. Let us proceed. So, <clears throat> So we want to know what socialism is and the importance of socialism as in the government, in our political direction, in African anatomy. We also want to know what capitalism is and it's important. And why do we think we have to actually practice what, uh, why we should practice capitalism or socialism? Okay, so Freedom yeah. Giant, so, uh, Kulibram, please proceed with us. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? How is things going on? Is everything okay up there? Great. Thank you for access. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I'm Akalo Abraham. I'm uh, having my discussion from, uh, my point is from Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, and now I'm in the southern part of Ethiopia. Um, <laughs> For the Easter holiday, I'm meeting my family in here. Uh, so I'm going to get back to Addis after maybe three, four days later. Um, I am the founder and then uh, uh, CEO of Wake Up Africa, Eat Your Global Hop. And then uh, recently, you know, gain Grand African Initiative Rep for Ethiopia. And then also I've been working on the voluntary vol volunteerism in Ethiopia as well. I've been preaching peace, love, unity in Ethiopia. And then I was in Nigeria for my honorary doctorate. I got my honorary doctorate from Nigeria for my doing here in Ethiopia that I tried to connect Ethiopian and African at the same time. And then I'm, 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 I'm also the ambassador of peace in Ethiopia. So I've been working on these things. And then I was in the military I, as well. If you remember, Ethiopian war, I'll try to contribute my part for my country as well. So these are some of the times for the like three decades and then half. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you for the real background of you. So, uh, socialism is, yes, please. You can can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Yes. Okay, so let, let me continue then. Oh. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, hello. Hi. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Can you hear, hear me? Okay, so let me continue then. Yes, we can hear you. So uh, I think uh, more of related with the people down to the ground level. Uh, if you take in the case of uh, uh, capitalism, it's more of free market. This free market is really playing in Africa because uh, if you take the of capitalism, it, 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 you know, you may see a few people in wealth, few people will be playing the economy of the nation. And, uh, and then if you come to the socialist, socialism, socialism is a little bit, you know, better. Huh? but it has got it its own problems as well. Let's see the capitalism. Uh, market based on economy, and then the market, is, you know, the supply and demand, that is the main thing on the uh, capitalism. And then also it is intended to make profit more of on the capitalism. Everybody rushes to find a profit. Someone may buy in 100 something and then may sell into 200 and 300 because it's a free market. 
That is very terrible. It needs the, the government's interference. It needs the control of the government. If the, go the government is not controlling during the time of, I mean, uh, on the capital system, it brings you a crisis to the society. We are facing this problem even in my country as well. You see, um, maybe like 80% of the national uh, the economy will be held by the 10% of the people maybe, because this is very crisis. 10% uh, of the wealthy people controls the 80% of the national uh, uh, economy system. This is very hard. So we have to work on maybe, uh, generally I may suggest on that uh, using the social capitalism because socialism has mainly focuses on the people. Capitalism mainly focuses on the profit of the uh, maybe individuals and then that leads into uh, the betterment of the country at the same time. Look, uh, <clears throat> on the other side, uh, the market determined the investment is determined by the capitalist system. The production also still determined by the capitalist system and the distribution, decision making. These all are in the capitalist system related with the private. The, the private leaders, I mean, those the business owners may play a greater role in this. So we have to take this. Uh, government is only there to facilitate the, 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 the capitalist uh, 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 economic system mainly intended for the betterment of those individuals mainly. So that is not okay. Uh, if you take the socialism, socialism is really placed on the individual, I mean, the people level. What is about the people? Makes people equal. And then that is very important thing. Um, in the capitalism, uh, privately owned organization are many. The whole country may be like privatized on the capitalist system. That is very hard. So still, the, 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 those who are, uh, the people may not be seen. Uh, that may bring disaster also too. Uh, <clears throat> look, what is the advantage of the capitalism? Maybe the consumers may have their own choice. People can choose whatever they need, but it's still the problem. And then also economic growth and expansion will be there maybe. Uh, the, the, I mean, the economic growth may be there, but the people may got a problem still. Maybe uh, we may we may we may like of you know many shortages of maybe the water shortage, the electric shortage, and the, the medical service shortage. Maybe those are that we may uh, may encounter as a problem. If you take the disadvantage of uh, the capitalism, chance of monopoly is there. Monopoly, one individual can play. Uh, on the roles of, uh, uh, can play the role of, you know, uh, monopolism that leads the people not to grow up, still living on poverty. That is really dangerous. And then there is also inequality. The richer becomes very rich and rich, and then the poor becomes very poor and poor in a capitalist system. If we are not controlling it as a government, the leaders needs to play a greater role on that. Inequality is a very, very hard thing uh, in the case of capitalism. And on the socialism, socialism mainly owned by the public. <clears throat> and then the public owns it, the government owns it, the state manages it, that is good. But when the state manages it still, there is, uh, you may not uh, have the opportunity, you know, job opportunity, unemployment rate is still there. But in capitalism, if you see, there are a lot of uh, technologies there, and then uh, we may introduce a lot of job opportunities for many. But if you take on the socialism, it's mainly focuses on the people's uh, 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 the people's uh, 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 safe way, and <clears throat> equal opportunities there on the socialism. The people mm. has got equal opportunity. The government is there to to control. So. It mainly focuses on that. Maybe you can take Cuba, and then you can take China, and then you can take Vietnam and then North Korea. These are the socialist countries that you see where, where they are. And then uh, still, it, but if you see, they are still taking both socialism and capitalism at the same time. They, mm -hmm. they, they're not only playing the socialism part only. Inside, they only say it's socialism, but it's still they're using the capitalism at the same time. Because look, China, where is she? But this country, it is still 
using the capitalism system as well inside. Mm. I will not grow only on the side. <clears throat> uh, look. Norway, Sweden, and the countries, if you like, but it's still the government controls the healthcare, education, pension. These are all controlled by the government. The government, the government controls things, but there is still socialists, but they're very country. You know, Norway, Sweden, how, you know, how they are already uh, Scandinavian countries, how they are really uh, rich enough on things. And and if you take Cuba, as I told you, Cuba, China, Vietnam, Russia, and Socialist and communist system as well, but still they are uh, in a good way. They are using the capitalist system as well, but the capitalist uh, economic system. Look, Great Britain, France, Ireland. These are also uh, strong socialist. They do you go to on system socialist party because they met. Uh, I mean the, the people themselves I mean and also business on these countries the political parts are still strong one socialist party they are fighting a lot for the people down there that means they need socialism at the same time I mean so you can take, take the look USA United States of America is the top one of the top uh uh, uh, uh this country and uh even on their system, what they put is social safety net program they do have. Look, they are capitalists meant to be. They are still doing something for the people down there. They are not only capitalists. They run the socialism as well. How? They worry about the society. What they did? They do have the program. What kind of program? Social safety net program they do have. What does this, this, this safety net program do? It works on security. Look, it works work is on Medicare, food stamping. It works on house assistant. You see, this is the concept of socialism. That you cannot only take socialism and then run. You need capitalism at the same time. You cannot only run capitalism, you need still socialism at the same time. These all are, I mean, developed countries, the Westerners, they are still want to have some, some kind of socialist kind of concept at the same time. Look Russia is doing. Look how she, Russia is playing the world leader these days. It's capitalism, capitalist, uh, I mean, socialist nation, but it's still they are using at the same time the capitalism. You know how they are also, you know, uh, playing and controlling, trying to control the Westerners, trying to control the Europeans. They do have a very good economy because they, they, they have been using eco uh, socialism, but still they do have capitalism. They have ample of uh, organizations they own. I mean, the technology is there. And then the nuke system. All right. And then the, 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 you can take Thank everything you. up. Hello. Thank you very much, um, ah, Abraham. Yeah. So, and, um, let to, 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 to make it much clearer to my audience today, I will just want to ask you. So, may, what may is I, your point of view? Is it that do you do you agree to the socialist ideology, or do you stand for the capitalist ideology? Oh, from your point of view, as I was listening, it looks like you want a moderation between the two ideologies yeah. where a country cannot just process one particular right. ideology or theory, right. but then they need to both blend the two in order yeah. to make yeah. uh, a nation stand. So basically, you are, are you trying to are you trying to stand for a union between the two concepts or you are trying to stand for one or the oh. other? Ah, uh, hello. Hi. I'm trying to blend. I'm trying to blend both at a time. You cannot only take the capitalism of people, your country. You need to take both at the same time. There are areas that the government needs to control. There are areas that the, the private institutions, the private owners needs to control. You know, we need right. to use both. In time. Okay. Thank you point. very much. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Abraham. So Dr. Abraham here today is saying that in the African anatomy, we need to blend those two concepts together. We cannot either just stand for socialism 
or just capitalism. Okay, so fair enough, he has given us certain disadvantages that comes with capitalism and that comes with socialism. So he made mention of Russia being a socialist um, community. And the, so where they are actually controlling the people, but in some way, he also made mention of America, which is very well known for its capitalism, but has also put, put in place some um, uh, socialist concepts and then federal, federal um, ideologies just around their country. So now, thank you very much, Abraham. We will give opportunity to our next Freedom Joint panelist to also just give us a brief idea of what it is about these two concepts, socialism versus capitalism. Let's welcome Freedom Joint Eric Okut Okut Okudi from Uganda. Thank you very much. Please just give an applause to Abraham. He has done so well, and I love all the topics he has brought on board. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate your ideas. The Lord bless you, and may you continue to move in the peace of Africa. So let's welcome our next um, Freedom Giant, Eric Okut Okudi from Uganda. It's a great pleasure, my dear sister. Thank you for moderating the program. Thank you. My name is Eric Okidi Okot. Okot. Oh, well, thank you so much for the pronunciation. Yeah, I can see you. There was a problem of pronouncing my name Okidi Okot. Okay. First of all, so I am. I will just give you the platform now to talk on your own conception, what you think about these two concepts, socialism and capitalism. It's important in your own um, in your own concept, in your own view, what is socialism, what is capitalism? Do you think these two concepts can stand independently of each other here in Africa? Or do you think that two of them need to come together? There should be a moderation, a union, as um, our uh, our freedom giant Abraham owes that conception or that um, ideology. So the the floor is now rolled on your own. Please, you can it's, it's a great pleasure, like uh, you, for hosting me for this kind of uh, sharing the ideas tonight. Uh, I'm delighted right now. I am Eric Okidokot. I'm from Uganda, Nepal of Africa. I am uh, one of the founder members of United Africa Movement Organizations, which is really running. I also am also a Pan-Africanist, which all, I, I've always been pushing for, the togetherness of Africa. Now, pertaining the question that has been raised and the topic of debate tonight, uh, capitalism vis-a-vis, Socialism. I will be so much delighted to talk about socialism because those are what my fathers and parents were talking about. Permit me to define what we do understand by socialism. When I talk about socialism, it's an economic and a political system under which a means of production are uh, publicly on and that would mean that if you are producing any commodity it is the public it is the government it is you who can own all those activities all the means of production publicly owned that is socialism and therefore permit me to a little bit bring about the origin of socialism I will talk about capitalism at one point, but permit me first concentrate on socialism, whereby you know the ideas and the political traditions that are come that are conceptually related to modern socialisms have their origins in antiquity and the Middle Ages. And that would mean the ancient, if you remember that. Uh, the civilization started right away from Ethiopia, the Egypt, the Af from Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, look, when you look at the ancient Egypt, had a very strong unified, zero active state, with along with its 
temple system employed peasants in massive labor projects and uh, on key parts of the economy. Yeah. Among them are the granaries. The granaries. If you know, do you have it in Nigeria? You have it in Ghana? You have it in well, granaries? That is one of the things. So you produce commodity collective together, and then when you don't have, they give you together. Right? I hope yeah. you're getting. I'm getting you, sir. I'm really following. <laughs> All yes. Right. So that, that's what we're trying to look at it. So this system of government is sometimes referred to as a active socialism. Now we look at the ends and greens. While private property was unacknowledged, the part of society with the basic elements of Greek economy. And so, so what life? Being the private horn and the estate. Now, that permit me talk about, I don't want to talk about, when talk about looking at the European perspective, because when you look at it the, uh, from in 19, from, from, from 1500s to 1600s, there was an, an enlightenment thought, then early modern socialism, from 1800 to, to 1830s, then the development of modern socialism from 1830 to 1850s, etymology and terminology from 19th century mm -hmm. to 20th century, Marxism and socialist movement, 1850s to 1910, interwar era and World War II, that was from 1970 to 1945. Post war and Cold War era, 1945 to 1989. All those were looking at the socialism perspective of it. But that is not important to us. I want us to look at now the, the African perspective. What is the idea of the African, the great pan Africanists? They're talking about the socialism, whereby every resources, everything should be owned by the society, collectively owned, is what we are looking at. And therefore, that comes and say, in 1957, when Kwame Nkrumah was fighting for the independence of Africa, he said that the independence of Africa will be useless, of, of Ghana will be useless. When the rest of the African states are still what? Under the colonial. Meaning, all along, we, were, we have been free. We have been sharing things ideas together. There was no boundary. There was nothing like a map of Africa, but people were living peacefully, sharing the common things. So when Kwame Nkrumah joined the event, he started advocating for socialism. Now, what has he gained from advocating for that, that socialism in 1957? He realized that there must be need to gain and protect the national resources which should be collectively gained and used by every citizen of any other country or in the continent. They were trying to advocate reductions in the wealth disparities. Now, when you look at the term of unemployment, socialism look at it, that why should, you, should somebody be unemployed? It is not proper. Can we be together? Can we be collectively and do that? It was said to look at inflation. Now, look at in terms of price control. You produce a commodity, the government will come and control the prices, meaning it will cut across uniformly. Unlike like capitalism, whereby you can produce your own commodity and you come up with your own prices and here and there, which will dictate somehow. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm our. our our elders were trying to fight for. Now, they were also trying to look at that effective utilization of natural resources. I give you an example, like mm -hmm. the constitution of Uganda as a country, and also Kenya, the East African countries, all the natural resources are shared equally by the community, by the public, and controlled by the government. An example, extraction of mineral, like gold, diamond, oil, 
all those things are under state control. Meaning if you extract it, make sure that every individual who drives a car or rides a motorbike, go and buy the fuel and that fuel is used by everyone. That is a system that our father, in the name of Kwame Nkrumah, in the name of, uh, of, of Tom Bayer, of, you, know, you know Kwame Nkrumah in 1957 from when he was trying to fight about those things. Yeah. They're very light. Yeah. You look at the Leopold Segna. We look at uh, Mandama Dia of Senegal. Mm -hmm. Sekoture of, of Guinea. Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana. You know, Tom Boya of Kenya, Julius Nyerere of Tanzania. Now, when I talk about Julius Nyerere, he adopted what you call Ojama policy. Ojama policy means family wood. Mm -hmm. You go to every village, everybody should be together. If you're producing any commodity, you produce it collectively. When you collect yeah. it also collectively, then later on you share it also collectively and you share it together. That was the spirit they were trying to look at. Now, when I see my sister in Ghana and I see my sister in, in, in Ethiopia or in Congo, in whatever, we are now divided. Those are the things. Yeah. When you look at capitalism, looking at a selfishness of an individual producing more and gain more capital at the expense of the rest. Yeah. Which is not proper. That kind of, uh, we call it greed, selfish, it is not good and that's the problem we have now in africa as we talk you remember now in ghana actually in, in africa ghana was one of the one one of the countries that has been advocating for socialism julius yeah. nyerere also adopted it apollo milton water in 1966 from uganda he adopted what he called obotes move to the left now obotes move to the left mean he has left the capitalism and he has joined the socialism Uganda, as we talk now, we have got both socialism and capitalism, dual economy, mm -hmm. of which I believe that if we are to take socialism, it's much better than capitalism, whereby I can come and, I can come and produce an own factory. I can see my brother is sharing a factory. It is owned by one person, which is very bad, and this is very wrong. What if, how about, if you have to come up with a factory, and uh, let's say the factory for producing uh, cotton, or maybe, maybe producing uh, cocoa in Ghana. Yeah. Now, all the one factory will process everything and will be distributed to everybody. Yeah. We look at the airlines, the planes we have, should be collectively honed. And that makes me now to say, what is government? You are the government, I am the government, yeah. My brother Isaac is the government, Gloria is the government, uh, the, everybody at the government. So meaning we have to collectively utilize it together and also if there is need, when the people on, on, on power, with superior power, they're not utilizing it well, we are the one to go and check. No, take a look, here is not right, here is good. We need to we need to we need to do this and we correct it, and that is why in Kwame Nkrumah in 1957 he advocated for all those and he said that there must be need of unity in Africa, yeah. and indeed he fought for it. And Ghana, as we talk now, I still, still admire it and we look at it. Now we look also at more advantages of socialism. Minimum wages. Now, when we look at in terms of employment protection and trade union, we recognize that the rights of the people, you see, the rights of the worker, it is recognized. Unlike the capitalism, where they always look at they themselves, they don't care whether this one has eaten or they have not eaten, they don't care. That is them. They want to benefit. But usually look at my brother Isaac from Ghana has not eaten today. What do we do? Let's share with him. And that yeah. reminds me, and that's also making make us a question that uh, my sister, like you, moderating. Uh, I believe at one point that you had a very nice closes here and there, and your sister were not having good closes. 
you were able to share your clothes not so sorry is this a put on this one and he put on the moves it's a put move put on moves and goes finish a uh, uh, whatever a uh, 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 program comes back give back your clothes you could share that is the spirit of nationalism that's what make me now say that the spirit of nationalization or nationalism or pan africanism or patrioticism that is it that is what socially promotes when you look at now nationalization of key industries or resources we look at that meaning you are able to also for an a trade union which recognize the rights of the workers redistribution of wealth social security schemes minimum wages employment protection every everybody should be employed in the field that is what we're looking at so when i give an a practical example when julius nyerere adopted the system that were, were, were developed by 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 kwame nkrumah he was like let's move to the villages and we build for you there there's land vast land there let's produce this we are going to cultivate coffee we are going to cultivate uh, uh bananas we're going to cultivate uh, cocoa then there are after you sell it collectively that was the spirit of togetherness and and we were having that before the coming of the colonialism when the british and the brit and, and frenchmen came and disorganized us the britain came to the east africa and and, and they colonized uganda they went to tanzania they colonized then later on Zanzibar joined Tanzania you see those things all those yeah. were done but what 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 is the issue they are just there to divide us that is capitalism to exploit us you know when talk about factor of production in capitalism in the capitalist whatever state labor entrepreneurship what what you are exploiting yeah. somebody at the expense imagine the owner of the factory in Ghana you know i i love i love kumasi do you know kumasi yes please now i come from the northern part of uganda and kumasi is also in the northern part of ghana not so yes please thank you yeah. now when we are in kumasi we look at the areas whereby we need, what do we need to do we need to look at togetherness there was a time when the a petrol station is it caught fire for a time that was uh, some months back you know that was for one person imagine one petrol station was owned by one person and it has killed and it destroyed the building of very many people that is capital of which i believe it is not really prudent we need to practice it now how do we relate to the democratic world we talk about as in a simple term if you you already your name is called remind me of your name gloria gloria now gloria gloria is a gloria comes right away we come right away from what from 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 kumasi let's say like principle of togetherness one another and that make me related to like you see our body parts yeah look at your eyes gloria you have got left eye and right eye not so the left has never seen the right and the right has never seen the left but they cry together am i lying yeah you see your your tongue is in your mouth right now as i talk yeah. several times when you are eating sometimes you even to bite your tongue to the extent it even bleeds yeah but is there any single day that your tongue said i don't want to stay with my teeth anymore no please. they will be together yeah that is the spirit of socialism all right so quickly i want to just chip in some few questions and then which you can proceed on the point you have you are bringing across so i've been listening to you for the past 20 minutes um your main points your arguments 
lies on socialism. You are arguing on the point that socialism is an ideal um, ground for an Africa or an African autonomy. Anatomy, the, Af uh, the Africa needs to actually follow or come into a socialist conception or a socialist a socialism ideology. So basically, I understand that the foundation of Africa or the foundation of a Uganda or Ethiopia or a Ghanaian is rooted in the tradition of communalism, communalism, where there's this um, saying that Ubuntu say, I am because we are, we are because I am. So we have this communalist perspective where everybody, when someone gets something, it belongs to everyone and not just for the single person. I agree with you 100% that capitalism mm -hmm. has bring about exploitation and other things, but in, in our world today, I believe and all the same, socialism has some disadvantages that it's causing our world. If you look at Africa, not to me right now, we, we have not been able to come out of our shell to create opportunity, job opportunity for people. People lie within them themselves ideas great opportunities great things they can invent but then governments have not given them that grounds to do so so looking so now considering the fact that we have not been given the opportunity to come out of our shelf to create work for others where government is now who is intended to help the society is now exploiting the society how do we then manage to grow because now our world is centered on this two ideology, either a capitalist society or a socialist society. And you are, uh, uh, you are advocating for the point that Africa needs to be a socialist society. So my point is that in, 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 in working in that perspective or in trying to build the Africa anatomy or political grounds to be a socialist ground like George Nerere, um, Kwame Nkrumah, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Sergio for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, or advocated for socialist, the socialist perspective. But now, look at the present contemporary now, now, yeah. our society is falling back because of this socialist perspective. The fact that governments have not been able to stand up for its people. And you said something, who are the government? The government is you and I. So the government of Africa is you and I, not someone in the state or something. It's everyone who make the government and we decide. So if you, if you are able to build businesses, um, one of the disadvantages I'm just trying to um, ex expatiate on what I want to bring on board is that governments are sat on the dreams of a lot of people. Instead of them to put in to help individuals um, bring about job opportunities and others, looking at for, looking at my jurisdiction, let me just um, uh, narrow my point to Ghana. So there are people who have good talent entrepreneurs government has brought up a low production of sales because of um, lack of opportunity people are unemployed what do you say about that because i see a lot of social the socialist conception bringing a lot of disadvantage to our state currently a lot of disadvantages like low income um exploit government is also exploiting individuals and it's not able to bring opportunities, job opportunities for people to work on. So what do you say? Resources are not well distributed. Although, yes, I understand that our conception as an Africa, as a communist perspective, we need to actually come together and help one another to build oneself. So what do you say about this um, negative vibe coming from the socialist um, perspective now currently, Gloria? May I say something in here? Yes, please. Did you get my question? <laughs> my question was too long. Hey, Dan, by the way, city get we we have a house in oh. a bright no, it's it's yeah. not like really too long. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hello. 
Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, if you want to bring up something to that, please. May I, say, may, may I say something in here, Laura? Yes, please. You can, you can proceed, yeah. Okay. Cool. Me, I, yeah, look, I just want to give one example. Hello. Yeah, hi. Ah. Uh, some kind of noise is there. Uh, please, can someone uh, unmute if you... Somebody needs to anyone. mute, yeah. Please mute it, yeah. Ah, uh, no Isaac, I'll see? get back to you very soon. Thank you. And if anybody wants ah. to ask, um, answer a question, please, you can just give me a um, raise your hand and, and then I will call you to speak. Thank you. Okay. All right. Here, yeah. Gloria. Ah, yes, look, I met uh, one of uh, a friend. Uh, he came to Ethiopia uh, yeah. from Cuba. He used okay. to live there. You know, Cuba okay. is a socialist country. Yeah. He has been lived there. He's Ethiopian descendant, but he's Cuban. His name is, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't have to call his name actually. Uh, he was telling me about their life there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the system, the socialist system, mm -hmm. you know, played them on their life. You do have foods. The government gives you food. The mm -hmm. government has got a kind of paper that a kind of that you show to the groceries and then you'll collect your things. Yeah. And then no, no problem of food for the people. But if you need to uh, make a business and then capitalize your business and then buy cars and enjoy life and then build something and yeah. then uh, empower another people and something, you can't find that. If you yeah. go to Cuba, even you, you may see the car before 100 years. Before That's 50 true. years, there was a car. They are still using that car. Yeah. The guy is telling me he, he has been lived there 37 years. Even he want to come to Ethiopia many times, he couldn't make the money for his ticket. Yeah. He told me that there is a guy who was uh, before 40 years, he was uh, uh, a dog, uh, 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 you know, a medic, you know, mm -hmm. what we call animal doctor. He only treats a dog for the last 40 years, he has been treating dogs still. Wow. No change, the same old story you run. Like we do in here. I mean, yeah. we, we are suffering from socialism. So socialism, you may eat your food or something like that, but you may not see apartment technologies and many things. You cannot that bring this true. Look, yeah. we have, we have um, black dissidents in Europe. We have black dissidents in America in every corner of the world, right? Yeah. They do have good minds. They do have amazing innovations up there. They can bring this and then innovate something in Africa, but mm -hmm. they couldn't find the opportunity in here because yeah. of our socialist system. Look, oh. another problem in our country, in our, in our continent is the leaders. The leaders are really amazing. They, they are totally not leading the countries. They want to stay there for the last set, for the coming 30 years and 40 years. That's not gonna work. You cannot bring any change living like that. Look, there is institutional in, uh, extractions. Many institutions are extracted by the leaders. Look, if you have one in, uh, an institution up there, there is a leader uh, who leads some kind of aid, and then he is there to use that money and then makes a uh, build this, uh, uh, his house in London maybe, and then his house in Dubai maybe. He makes money in here and then put you his money that in. You know that for sure, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, is, this is the reality we have been suffering from. These leaders, they are not thinking about their people. They use it. 70% of users are here in Africa, All right? right? The, the Thank young, you the very young. much, um, Abraham. Uh, Freedom Giant Abraham. Uh, I will call on um, Freedom Giant um, Isaac to just give us, um, okay, Emmanuel want to say some freedom giant Emmanuel want to give us a, a view. So Emmanuel, please, you're on the line. You can give us your view. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity, freedom giant Gloria Kwe. Uh, well, I would like to say just two things. I think the problem with Africa uh, is lack of proper maintenance. 
Okay. Uh, social, socialism is helping, but maintaining the main, maintaining of uh, government is is our problem. We we that can't maintain, we can't maintain the things that have been established for us. That's so true. At the, we go forward and we come back again, like uh, we retrograde. And yeah. the second, government, government is uh, has this inability to invest into private companies, as a to subsidize them, like mm. subsidize them in mm-hmm. uh, doing their projects. Because when you look at America during the COVID era, uh, yeah. I, I something online that says that the government pumping money into private sectors mm-hmm. just for them to be able to employ more after uh, uh how do i say this they pop in money into the private uh companies just yeah. for the company not to die off for the companies mm-hmm. to stand on up so in it at the long run the government will tend to take taxes huge taxes from them because they have been I, able to i agree with that must- yes that's all i have to say thank you very much all right thank you very much freedom giant emmanuel so basically i will also say that I will always stand with a moderation between a capitalist and the socialist conception. Because all the same, we are not um we are not uh, beyond like the, the government sector. When when where we live in our society, we live in a country and that country is governed by we ourselves, elected government, we people with elected government. So one thing I'll say is that government should give opportunity or the society or the country or the africa anatomy should give opportunity to ace people to develop themselves to build businesses because when we only concentrate on socialism we are not going to be we are going to be dependency on cooperative pooling and then there's not going to be innovation like has there been lack of competitive and where there's lack of competitive the country cannot grow because individually speaking when you're able to bring our businesses on board ideas new things the country can now boom there's there'll be money running in the system where government still comes in to tax the people individuals so government still have a role to play in individual business not that government should leave individual to decide pricing government can give a direct uh, a particular pricing system and say look now and this we're having we are facing inflation or we are facing a situation like this so government now comes in to decide okay you are owning this business now i want you to price this at this category so that these A and B people in this uh, country can be able to purchase that as considering the poor also in it. So it should be um, both affairs. Also, I'm not saying that it should be capitalism because capitalism, when it's just individual controlling business, they tend to exploit, they tend to be monopoly, they tend to be exploitation so much that Nobody can actually have a say in your business because if I'm I'm owning my own shoe business and then I'm running it by myself, I determine the money pricing. And then maybe someone who cannot in my country who cannot afford the less privileged person cannot afford to get a shoe, then becomes a bit of a problem. But then now government comes in to say that look, okay, you own this business, we are helping you to to establish it well. So we have a percentage we pay in because you cannot actually do business be um, outside the state or outside the country you as an individual being a Ghanaian, being an ethiopia i am a uganda i'm from uganda so there you have the title of your country bearing that title of your country so i'm from ghana so that makes me a Ghanaian. but if me being a Ghanaian, even though I'm in Scotland, that's not making me a Scottish, but it makes me a Ghanaian because I am born in Ghana. So if my government comes in when they ask you your nationality, so that means that you cannot run business be, um, outside of the state or outside of a country. So I think like the United Kingdom is doing privileges, opportunities has been given to uh, individuals to build businesses on their own but then they are being taxed every day and as um freedom giant emmanuel said the ability to all what you've been given to to control it to maintain maintenance socialism is not a bad conception it's a good one and if you want to know my view for this uh, talk as a moderation as a, i'm on the middle ground 
not too of too much of a socialist, not too much of a capitalist. So I'm not in the extreme ends. I'm in the middle. I said, let that be a union. Let that be this uh, understanding where what of uh, where these two concessions comes into play and help build the country. So now I give um, grants to the general public here who are on the line right now. If you have any question you want to throw on my panelists, um, Freedom Giants lawyer Eric has spoken, and Doctor Freedom Giant Doctor. Um, what's the name? Sorry, uh, is it Eric or that? Sorry, I have to. I made a mistake with the name. So I just want to quickly check yeah. my pen. Um, hello, my hand is up. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that, Doctor. Please, you can, Doctor Yuma Faruku. Please, can you mention your name for me, Freedom Giant, so that everybody gets to know you? Ambassador. Dr. Saad Umar Farouk from Nigeria. Oh, and welcome, <laughs> Ambassador Dr. Sado Umar Farouk from Nigeria. Please, you can yes. speak. It's my pleasure to belong to this beautiful family. And Thank um, you. especially no, okay. the, topic of, the topic of discussion, whether socialism or capitalism, which is best for us as Africans, because the concept of Africa One Family is the concept I believe in, is a concept that I intend to die with. That is Africa One Family, irrespective of where you come from. Yeah. Now, I have an issue. I'm a practical uh, student. I don't believe in theory. Theoretically, okay. they will tell you that demo democracy is the government of the people by the people this the people that, that the people true. but when it comes to re yes but when it comes to reality the people are not given the opportunity to be the government that they claim in the theory that is true um, yes the issue with africa is not either capitalism or socialism no mm -hmm. it's wickedness selfishness Yes, I want to call it the way it is. I don't believe in <laughs> yes, That is all play, you know. <laughs> you yes, can proceed. That is the simple truth. It's <laughs> wickedness. So all we need is the change of mindset. Let me tell you, my dear sister. Let mm. me tell you, my dear sister. No matter the system of governance, either socialism, capitalism, communi communism, or any you bring in Africa, if it's the same set of people, like the freedom giant has, giant has said, an African leader will want to lead until he enters grave. If he is to live for 100 years, he wants to be the head or the leader of that country until after 100 years. And when he is about dying, he will hand over the baton <laughs> of leadership to his own son. I'm sorry, son. you are taking me so much aggression. So the truth about it is we, what we need in Africa is the change of mindset. Once we have a change of mindset, everything will be in place. Thank you very okay. much. I, Thank you very much, yes, Ambassador Freedom Dance, Ambassador Dr. Sadu Himan Rafuk. Uh, that, that was a very emotionally talk. Uh, the, your, your, your speech, your, your suggestion was very judgmental. All the same, I think it is true. There should be a renewal of our mind. Our thoughts as Africans need to change because one person told me something said, look, if you put Africa in Europe, and say Europe come to Africa and we are still having the same old leaders. Trust me, you are going to turn Europe upside down. One thing I realized when I got, I got to Scotland, um, particularly Glasgow, it says that people make Glasgow. People make Glasgow. That means individuals as we are can make Africa. If only we change our thinking, our ideologies, our perception, and we act as we say we are. Because I believe also, I stand strongly that as a community, if we stand as a community, we can do it better than it. So together we can. So there is always the saying that, look, if you have a broom, a stick of a broom out of a, a union when you break it it's easy to break but then the two the whole frame of a broom when you're trying to burn it or break it it's unable so therefore i think when we come together as we really say we are coming in society as africa because africa we believe in union we believe in togetherness we are not different we are not uh about self 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 we are self-centered we are union-minded 
you are family minded. So please, I think what um, our doctor just put on board is really true. So as we are going through this dialogue, it's not just a talk, it's something we have to implement as individuals. We need to exhibit that trait everywhere we go as freedom giants. Let's show our world that look, we are together. I don't know you, but I don't need to know you in order to help you. I don't need to have a relationship with you in order to help you. Once you are an African and I have the means to help you, why not? That is what our Bible even tells us, our religion or whatever religion you are, just love. When we are able to stand on the core mandates of love, we can actually be able to move as freedom giant to inspire our world and to bring our world to, to a, a, a better place. Because even here in Europe, how things are going is on, uh, we cannot speak about it. So yes, anybody, if anybody has any question also, we can give the person a chance. So I have here, uh, Zorika, um, Freedom Giant Zorika, please you can come on board, you can speak now, please. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Freedom Giant. <laughs> I just had a, a few questions listening to you. I got some inspiration. So I'm not from Africa, but uh, I used to live in a country which was uh, socialism. Now, yeah. I think it's um, the country I'm living in now is, I don't know, somewhere in between. But I have two questions actually connected with what uh, the two of you said. So one okay. is, <clears throat> you, you mentioned uh, Ubuntu, and I do think that it's connected with the topic we have today. But what mm -hmm. happens if, uh, you know, the people and it, uh, there is a tendency for this to happen uh, when people who are um, governing a country, managing a country, when they, they tend to lose this sense of Ubuntu, you know, in a socialism and yeah. to actually, you know, <laughs> just uh, then it's in my um, opinion or the way I feel, then it's even uh, worse than a capitalism you know, where. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. So that's all we are even saying that practically speaking, when we look at the Africa anatomy, we see our leaders actually falling short in place of the socialist perspective. Because um, we say Ubuntu, we say we are together, we say socialism, we try to create hospitals and other facilities for people, but we realize that nothing is just actually being made and we end up exploiting them and we does not actually make any good sense at all. Yes, I so I would actually just like uh, our two, they're gone now, but if they come back, maybe, no, sorry. Uh, so if you can actually give us some practical ideas, you know, how, what could be done to prevent this from happening, not just in Africa, but in all socialist uh, okay. countries. So that's one thing. And the other thing, uh, I agree with um, you, Gloria, what you said that um, when there is no competition, this is actually not good for uh, progress. And yeah. I've, I've noticed this in Serbia, where in many uh, state institutions, yeah. you don't actually, people are not motivated to be productive because when they're protected and safe when you know their um the reward they get or their salary whatever when it doesn't depend on their productivity when, when they start taking things for granted so i think it's also part of human nature so again if you have any ideas how this could be um somehow what precautions could be taken uh, you know so to prevent this from happening in socialist countries thank okay, you so Thank you very much Zoe, for your question. That was a very um, excellent one. So basically, I'll just put one thing across board is that for, for every socialist society, one thing we can do to actually stop this kind of um, self-centered or uh, unconcerned or non-practical socialist conception is to have a moderation that is a form of a check and balance. Let's, let's be truthful. Someone to come in place and say, look, if government is not doing the right thing, let us as individuals, let us as citizens stand up for the truth and let's take out, let's take out that government from that system. You know, basically speaking, like Ghana, for instance, let me, let me just use my country for instance. 
we see that what government is not what government is doing is wrong but just because you are you are a part uh, you are in a, 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 a political party or you are affiliated to a political party, you tend to keep mute and you tend to defend the wrong thing that the government is doing. But how can this actually happen if our country is centered or is divided between socialists and capitalists? Because in every country, I think these two political grandstands, there is a socialist, there's a capitalist, uh, so the Democrats and then the other. So, or, Either we have the let, let me not mention let me not mention any political um, party so that I, I'll not someone will not brand me here uh, to be affiliated to a political <laughs> party. <laughs> I really fear that so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a and B. Yeah, let's say party A and B. Thank you very much. Party A and B. So you see party A doing the wrong thing. So party A is in power. Party A is a socialist, but party A claims to be a socialist and it's not doing what the social terms are terms and conditions are what do we do here we have to try as individual to put them in their right places that is so that sincere check and balance should be maintained where that after the term of office of that party which is a socialist party they should be they should go under strict scrutiny strict under strict scrutiny without any pardon without any pardon, a sincere one where you can say, look, you said you would do this and you didn't accomplish it. And we should also, individual, when we are coming, we should have this conception that we are come to serve the country, not to exploit the country. Because now we tend to actually make profit out of our service, which is very wrong. One time I was in, uh, I was in the Glasgow city center and someone was speaking about, was talking on the, on the fact that um it's only politics politics for politicians that do not pay taxes in europe only politicians don't pay taxes yet every common person every civil servant person pay tax but a politician will never pay a tax even if he's running business why because he's serving the country the notion is that he's serving the country he's helping the country so he's helping the country he doesn't really need to offer anything but his service so then you don't need to actually take advantage over the country. Secondly, if party B comes in power, party B, you knowing that party A, which is a socialist party, is doing something great, you should applaud. You shouldn't rush to remove that person from power. There should be unity. This only thing, this thing can stop. This all bitterness from both worlds can stop in our global anatomy can stop if we consider one another. If we consider ourselves, our country, that's where it comes out, uh, patriotic citizens of each country you are coming from. You consider your country above you. Um, JFK Kennedy says something, think not what your country can do for you, but think what you can do for your country. That means if you see any government doing something wrong, you have the mandate, you have the mandate, the right the audacity, to gather people and tell the truth. Look, let's let's come out of this brainwashing. Let's come out of this selfishness, and let's gather ourselves and fight for this cause. That is why this cause, freedom, giants. That's why we have made this the one dialogue, freedom. To come here on board to 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 ginger us and to encourage us. To, look, let us stand for the right motive. The truth is there, but then we lie in deception. The truth is there and. We try to, because of money or because of our selfish desires, we try to hide behind the truth and then pursue individual or political parties, uh, political, uh, let me see, interest. It's not about the political interest. It's about our country's interest. It's about everybody's interest. So this is just what I want to say that there should be in place check and balance a strict one where will any party who comes in power, like capitalist party who comes into power, after they are gone, after they are turned off it, they should be checked, scrutin they should be scrutinized on what they did and if every policy they raised about, because now politics has become lies. I promise you A and B and I come and do just A minus or A negative, which is not fair. So this is just my thoughts on it. If anybody has anything to say, you can unmute and then 
you can proceed on what you want to discuss if any one of you has anything to say. The opportunity to add to what you have just said, if you will give me the opportunity again. Yes, opportunity is granted, sir. Okay. You see, you made mention of party A, party B. As I said earlier, I'm a practical uh, person. Okay. You see, in those days were the days when party A is doing the wrong thing, party B will try to come and change it. But in recent democracies in Africa, as far as Africa is concerned, this, there was a saying that they normally say, if you cannot beat them, don't yeah. join them. But now I want to let you know that everybody don't want to even attempt to beat them. If party A is doing the wrong thing, party B will try to find a way of joining them. So I'm calling on us the freedom giants to take it as a mandate for ourselves that anywhere you see the wrong thing being done, please and please, if you cannot beat them, don't join them. But the truth about what you have just said as far as African leadership is concerned, even the political parties, they are just like, let me just give you like all this uh, European football, Chelsea, Manchester, uh, yeah. and the rest of them. The same uh, Didier Drogba played for Chelsea. Tomorrow, Didier Drogba can go and play for Man U. That is how African politicians are. I'm telling you with the context of Nigeria today. Today, Mr. A will be in party A because you see party A has the majority support. He is not doing that because he loves party A or the ideologies of party A. No, he is doing it because party A have majority of uh, supporters. So he will now follow party A to come to the government. Tomorrow, when party B gain the majority, he would change that JC, just like the way I said, from Man U to Chelsea, Chelsea to the other club. They are shameless. African politicians are shameless. Sorry, I'm saying it the way I know with my own uh, practical experience. We are shameless. We don't have shame. If we have shame, many things should have been changed. Like the forefathers we have mentioned, Kwame Nkurma, Sardauna, all those forefathers of Africa, they came, they served the people and go. But our recent politicians come for us to serve them. Forget that is why you say they are not paying taxes because they are, they are not doing that because. They are not even after uh, they paying the taxes. They are also exploiting us. So still is bound to that change of mind. If party A is not doing anything, irrespective of the person that is there, let's right. come Thank together, you, stand up, and change that person. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Freelaw um, Johnson, Mano, please, you can proceed. Uh, okay, thank you for the opportunity, Freedom Gent, Gloria. Well, as for me, I always have two things to say. <laughs> well, <laughs> one is that in Africa, uh, the opposition party tends to have more ideas, more ideas when they are in opposition, the opposition party. But immediately they uh, assume power, then those ideas seem to vanish. I don't know what is wrong. Give it is. It, it has something to do with the throne that it sits on or whatever. <laughs> and that's what, all I want to say. And the second is that there is this fear, the scrutinizing you are talking about, uh, you are talking about more like auditing. Yeah. Well, uh, it's a, a panelist where they are audits, uh, how do I say it, thoroughly. But I think yeah. this won't work because let's, let's uh, take this scenario. Uh, Freedom Giant Gloria, if you and I attended the same school, and we were doing politics and I belong to party A, you belong to party B. And I wanted to run for a position. And on campus, you helped me achieve that, uh, my dream. And now yeah. we, are, we have graduated and we meet, uh, we meet in national politics. And now you became a government and you misbehave. And I, 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 uh, I also uh, contest you and I won and I'm now the government in power. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, I'm going to call a panelist to scrutinize you? Do you think I'll do that? Or uh, call uh, an audit board to audit that is you? Where, that's what comes in to say integrity. That is what our country because is we are lacking. Friends. That's because true. We are, we, we are afraid mm -hmm. to actually speak. We and we, are, we believe in, there is this uh, code we use on the street that scratch my back and let me scratch, uh, scratch your back. 
So it will be very difficult for us to achieve this. It, it will be very difficult to achieve this because look at this uh, Russia uh, and Ukraine uh, uh, war. Uh, I heard, I read an article that most of the uh, generals, the generals uh, in uh, Russia and Ukraine attended same military school. That is why Russia is finding it difficult to even uh, attack them with all the missiles that they have. So what I'm saying is that uh, this uh, scrutinizing thing and calling panelists to do audits, it won't really work until we really put in matching for it. it. It won't work. I'm telling you this. I know what I'm saying. I'm, I, even though I'm in school, I'm also involved in national politics, but I'm still in school. And I know what, what goes on. It's, it, it, it's happening here. It's happening here. Thank Sorry, you. Guy Emmanuel, that is where I want us to differ. I want the I want us to take the giant step by making the change. If we cannot beat yeah. them, we don't join yeah. them. The so giant step. Let it work for the first time. If you do the wrong thing, I close my eyes. This is a know, respect of our know, previous um, relationship. I do the right thing. I'm not doing Dr. it. Dr. Study for Dr. Kwame Kumar and our great Afghan politicians or governments or leaders. Let me even mention Martin Luther King died for the cause of freedom, justice, died for the cause of the truth. Because in earlier, um, the global anatomy in the Af uh, America anatomy or American government, the blacks were not allowed to vote and also many things. They were lying in such deception. They were lying in that um, strictness that you cannot do some, anything as a black person, but they fought for the cause, they fought for the freedom with every single thing. This is why we are here, we are speaking on this topic to encourage one another to move to the motion of this. It will cost our blood, but forever we will remain freedom giant. For wherever we will remain that people that fought for the truth, that fought for the trueness of our government. Because if you want Africa to be United Africa, United States of Africa, then we as individuals from all walks of life, Uganda, Nigeria, Niger, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and so whatever, Kenya. Can we, I need to, we need to make this happen. It even takes your blood, yeah. You will, Can I you will be beaten up. Yes, 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 freedom giant man. Uh, what I think will solve the problem is uh, whenever an administration uh... Hello, freedom giant Tima. Freedom giant Emmanuel. Okay. Um, Freedom giant Zorika, do you have any view to put on in place near? Uh, well, I actually wanted to uh, ask our two presenters uh, on this topic today what they, how they would answer it, if they see a solution to these two problems or whatever okay. issues that I mentioned. Okay, so um, Dr. Ibrahim, Freedom Giant Dr. Ibrahim, do you think there's any solution to, to the view that Zurika put across? Do I need to repeat the questions? Mm. Yes, um, if, uh, sure. I, I did agree So that. Yeah, so the first one was as we have all, noticed obviously that in socialist uh, countries or systems uh, when people come into power they actually start behaving in a way which is more damaging than people in uh, capitalist societies so what can we do about this how can this be resolved and also since as i said people tend to lose motivation in societies where their their jobs are safe they're protected they don't have to try harder you know do their best 
and how can we resolve this issue as well? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, in general, uh, from my point of view, as far as I'm concerned with that, uh, what I feel is uh, there are basic things that we need to do as a, as a people. Uh, and then also the government needs to work on something serious issues, especially related with uh, the security and then about the peace system, and then also uh, controlling the in and out of the economy. Uh, that, that, is, that is the main thing, but still the people needs to play a greater role. Even if, uh, if you see in Africa, the people uh, may not given a chance to, con to see all, I mean, the, to control the resources and something like that. Mainly the government, those leaders are playing a greater role. Those leaders who, who are not concerned about their people. So they need to be changing their mind. They have to focus. I have five things that uh, I always do uh, from on my ways for the last uh, many years that I've been trying on different uh, organization leaderships and in my all careers, I always think about five things very important points, especially uh, love of the country. If they love their country, they may not do something wrong. And then also the love of the flag, the love of the people. These are a very major things for one to be concerned for their, you know, for, 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 for the betterment of uh, the future. And then the other point is thinking about the generation. These are, these are the, the five, the fifth one is fear of God. These people doesn't have these five things. You see, this is the problem that I'm facing. They don't fear God. If they fear God, they may not do something wrong to their own people. They don't yeah. love their, 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 their country. See, if they love their country, they may not do these things also too. And then also, uh, we need to have concerned citizens. That's concerned about every single point, what is happening in the nation, because, this is also another problem. You know, usually I, I don't like politics, people say, no, 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 that's not my job. I don't wanna say anything about this. I may go to prison. I don't wanna play this kind of stuff in something. This is a very, very problem in, in our cases, even all over the, the world that you can say, but if we don't confront and then we don't suggest this is wrong, yeah. this is this. So we don't say, that's also one problem. So we need to fix this, this all things. Attitudinal change needs the mean, and then, uh, and then the unity, unity. As, 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 as a citizen of one country, people needs to be united. As a, you know, Pan-Africanism, our forefathers, how they played to change their, their, their country. That's a long story, actually. Now the time is ours. This generation needs to yeah. bring a change. This is our time. And then uh, also, we need to have the national feeling. You know, the feeling you know, national feeling is one of the problems that we're missing, like that of the country, loving the country. So if you love your country, if you do have national feeling, you may not do something wrong. So this is what yeah. we lack. So we need to work on that. These are the major things. So, and the big, the big thing is we need for, to change Africa. We have to fight corruption. Corruption is playing like, in, it's a kind of cancer that has been playing the people of uh, uh, the continent in general. I mean, I'm just suggesting the general view. I mean, I think I tried to answer your question, but still I'm, I'm giving you some insights on that too. Here in Africa, everyone needs to have a money. Everyone needs a shortcut. That's a terrible thing. So that is one of the problems that you're facing. So we need to work on this. The leaders, they're all corrupt. Most of them are corrupted. And then the president, the, the, all, you know, if you say the ministers, they all, all just right. play some, some kind Thank of wrong. Thank you very much. You need to Honorable. work on that. So I think I tried to answer your questions like that. So uh, in general, I just want to say it's good to blend socialism and capitalism is, I think, the major thing that we need to focus on to change this continent in general. All right. Thank if you I very much, Frida Giant Iran. Thank you so much for your suggestion and then for trying to answer Zodi question too. Just to add up to what you said, but trusting your points, I think here yeah, the key thing is about love for your country, love for the country, love for your people, because the underlying word is love. Once you love your country, you will not hurt your country. You will not try to exploit the, another, the other person, but rather you try to put in, sacrifice, give to your country. Like I said earlier, GFK Kennedy's word always ring in my mind. 
Think not what your country can do for you, but think what you can do for your country. Individually, when we talk about corruption, it's reciprocal, it's individual affair, not governmental, because it comes from the family roots, it comes from somewhere. Because when I try to corrupt you, I try to give you this as bribe. When you take it, you are corrupt. When I give you, I am corrupt. So it's reciprocal. It's not just the individual. What makes the government corrupt is we. We have decided to make the government corrupt because once upon a time, it started some way, the root of, or the virus of AIDS was growing, yet we did not try to curtail that virus or try to find diagnosis or, or try to find an antidote for the virus that you said. It's like cancer. Corruption grew and it's growing and it's everywhere in the world, but it can be reduced. And it can only be reduced if you've come to the notion and understanding of what love is, our passion for our country, individuals that we stand for the right thing and say, look, if it will cost my death and it will cost me losing everything for the state, for my generation, because remember every law, every theory, everything we bring, everything we say that look, we want for our country, for this world, for this global anatomy, for this African anatomy, it's for a generation. It's not for just us, but we are doing it for thousands of people who will come and pass through the system. So this is all for today's topic. We've actually over spent time and I would like to ask Zodic or any other person, if you have any question, just five minutes and then someone will lead to the closure of the meeting. We'll call our, our president, Freedom Giant Isaac, to give us a talk if he has anything to say. Freedom Giant Isaac Bredo, the initiator of the Africa Voice International. Freedom Giant Isaac, if you're on board, kindly unmute and then speak. Okay, without anything on board, let us lead our then call Freedom Giant Emmanuel Edo to lead us to the closure of this meeting. And the name is Ado, Noi Ado. You have something to say? Okay. Um, freedom giant. Um, Eric, you can you can speak. Yeah, I quite so rainy. Yeah, the net been on and off, but. Uh, I know the type of and what has been transferred. Try to join in. Yes. Join. Oh. I think we are losing Eric. Yes, fortunate. Um, anybody? So, Freedom Giants Erika, do you have anything to say or in addition, any suggestion you want to bring on point on board? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. So, Freedom Giants Emmanuel. Okay, I'll lead to the closure of the meeting. Freedom Giants. Emmanuel, can you second and then pray with us? All right. Uh, well, I must say I've learned a lot today. Uh, it was very impactful and insightful learning from uh, all the big freedom giants across the group of Africa. Uh, well, I must say uh, what I learned today was that uh, socialism or capitalism can stand alone or can't govern a country alone. But a blend of the two works hand in hand in developing a country. And thank you very much for this piece. Uh, I would like to bring the meeting to a closure. Shall we obey down our I, uh, our X, sorry. Uh, there is this prayer I always say, and I'm going to repeat this prayer. And I, be, I hope, I, I pray you listen to the words attentively. 
Father, please lead us through the bad times as well as the good. May we be heard and understood. May you judge us by our hearts and not by our mistakes and see to it that we have a breakthrough however long that it takes. Amen. 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 Thank you all for joining into this meeting. It was a great time with you. The discussion was awesome. I hope to see you all in our next meeting. So God bless you and let us have a wonderful day.